By the end of this video, you're going to easily be able to factor trinomials. And in about 30 seconds, here's how this video is going to get you there. We're going to be factoring five trinomials in this video, and they're going to be getting harder as we go. In the first two problems, we'll just have the x squared by itself. But in the next three, we're going to have cases where the x squared is not by itself. In problem three, we'll actually be able to get that two away from the x squared and we'll be able to factor like normal. But in problems four and five, we won't be so lucky and we'll have to factor by grouping. And after we go through all that, I'll give you a problem to try and answer in the comments. And by that point, it should honestly be breezy. And if you're looking for the printable notes for this video, and, and that's right, you heard me right. I said the printable notes that I made especially for you for this video. If you're looking for those notes, they're going to be linked right in the description. Now, starting with our first problem here, we have x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now, if we want to factor this trinomial, here's all we need to do. We need to find two numbers that add to be this middle number here, the number with the x, and those two numbers need to multiply to be this number without the x. So we need two numbers that add to be 5 and multiply to be 6. And how I like to just organize all of this information is I like to write a little x diagram. This will especially help out when we're doing factoring by grouping. And I put these two numbers, 5 and 6, on the left and right. So we want two numbers that add to be 5 and multiply to be 6. And then when I find those two numbers, I put them on the top and bottom. So now let's find those two numbers. Now if you're having trouble thinking of those two numbers off the top of your head, what I recommend doing is just starting out with the multiplication. What are some numbers that multiply to be 6? Well, we know 1 times 6 is 6, but those two numbers don't add to be 5. So what about 2 and 3? Those two numbers multiply to be 6, and they also add to be 5, so those are going to be the two numbers that we use here. So I'll put my 2 here and my 3 here. And now all I need to do to factor this trinomial is I'm going to write my factors out. And the two numbers that I just found, 2 and 3, they're going to go here and here. And that is going to be my answer for problem 1. Now, it might seem a little bit random to you why we would need to find two numbers that add to be something and multiply to be another thing. Like, where does that whole thing even come from? Well, I'll show you. What we're going to do is multiply these factors out. So I'm going to multiply the x by x. That gives me x squared. x times 3 is 3x. And then I have 2 times x, which is 2x. And lastly, I have 2 times 3 which is 6. And then I can combine like terms here with the x's and I get back to my original quadratic, which is x squared plus 5x plus 6. So first off, this is a great way to check your answer. But secondly, it uncovers the mystery of why we needed two numbers that add to be 5 and multiply to be 6. Where in this work do you see two numbers adding to be 5? Well, you can see that right here, we have our two numbers, 3 and 2, adding to be 5. So we get that 5x in our original quadratic. And then secondly, you know, where do you see two numbers multiplying to be 6? Well, you can see that when we multiply these two factors out, one of the steps is to do 2 times 3, is to multiply those two numbers. And that gives us the 6 that is in our original quadratic. So that's why we always have to solve this weird little riddle of adding to be this and multiplying to be that when we do our factoring problems. So I'll get all the extra work off the screen and I'll circle our answer. And now we're good to move on to problem two. Now problem two is the same process as problem one. Here, we're trying to find two numbers that add to be negative seven and that multiply to be negative 18. So if you're having trouble thinking of those two numbers right off the top of your head, then let's start with the multiplication. What are two numbers that multiply to be negative 18? Well, we know we could do 1 and negative 18. We could do negative 1 and 18. But neither of those are going to add to be negative 7. So let's keep going. We could do 9 and negative 2. And what about negative 9 and positive 2? Well, those will add to be negative 7. So that works. Those are going to be our two numbers, negative 9 and 2. So all we have to do is we write our factors. And we put negative 9 here. We put a plus 2 here. And that's our answer for problem 2. Now, for problem 3, we're in a little bit of a sticky situation here because 
Now all of a sudden that x squared is not by itself, it's got that 2 in front of it. In the last two problems, we were able to factor normally because the x squared was always by itself. You can see in problem 2 it was by itself, and in problem 1 it was by itself. Problem 3 is a little bit different because it has that 2 there. So the first question that we want to ask when we see a number on the x squared is can we get that number away from the x squared? And how we would get that 2 away from the x squared is by factoring it out. So can we factor a 2 out? Well, we'll be able to factor a 2 out if all of these terms are divisible by 2. And in this case, all of these terms are divisible by 2. They can be divided by 2 evenly. And that means that we'll evenly be able to factor out a 2 here. So we'll factor that 2 out, and that means that we need to divide each of these terms by 2. Now 2x squared divided by 2, that's x squared. Negative 14x divided by 2 is a negative 7x. And then 20 divided by 2 is a positive 10. And so now we've managed to get that 2 away from the x squared. Here you see we have a quadratic where the x squared is by itself. And that means we can factor just like we did in problems 1 and 2. So let's set up our little x chart here. And we need two numbers that add to be negative 7 and multiply to be 10. So what are those two numbers? Well, what are some numbers that multiply to be 10? We know that 5 and 2 multiply to be 10, but those don't add to give us a negative number. So let's try some other numbers. Let's try to see if we can throw in some negatives here. Well, I know that negative 5 and negative 2 also multiply to be 10, and these two numbers add to be negative 7. So those are going to be the two numbers that I use here. So what we're going to do is set up our factors now. And we just put the numbers that we found in these two spaces. So we're going to put negative 5 here, negative 2 here. Of course, it doesn't matter if you put the negative 2 here and the negative 5 here. You can switch them however you like. So that's the answer for problem 3. All right, now let's move on to problem 4. And again, we have a case where there is a number on the x squared. The x squared is not by itself. And so the first question that we're going to ask is, can we get that 2 away from the x squared? And we can do that if we can factor out a 2 evenly, but here we're not going to be able to do that, can we? Because 17 is not divisible by 2 and 21 is not divisible by 2. So that whole idea of getting the 2 away from the x squared is not going to happen here. And so what we're going to have to do is factor by grouping. So how do we factor by grouping? Well, what we need to do is find two numbers that again add to be this middle number here, which in this case is 17. But it's not two numbers that multiply to be 21. It's actually going to be this 21 times the number out front of x squared. So it's going to be 21 times 2. And 21 times 2 is 42. So now we want two numbers that add to be 17 and multiply to be 42. And now you can probably see a little bit more of why this x chart is a nice organizational tool. But anyways, yeah, what are two numbers that add to be 17 and multiply to be 42? Well, this one is pretty hard, so try to see if you can figure it out. But some numbers that multiply to be 42, I mean, we could have, yeah, 1 and 42, but of course that's going to be nowhere near a 17 when we add those numbers together. So what about a 6 and a 7? Well, 6 times 7, that is 42, but those two numbers added together is 13. So we've got to try to think of something else. So it might take you a while to think of this, but you'll eventually come up with the numbers... 14 and 3. These two numbers multiply to be 42, and they also add to be 17. So these are going to be our two numbers here. So we put the 14 here and the 3 here. And now what we're going to do is we're not going to write our answer as x plus 14 times x plus 3. That's not how factoring by grouping works. What we're actually going to be doing with those two numbers that we just found is we're going to use them to split up this 17x. So I'm going to write this quadratic as 2x squared, and then splitting up the 17x into these two numbers, I'm going to get a plus 14x plus 3x, and then I have my plus 21. Now notice that if you simplify this quadratic, you would want to combine like terms, 14x plus 3x, that's 17x. So these two quadratics are equal, we haven't changed anything here. We're just writing the quadratic in a different way, and that's going to allow us to factor it. So what I'm going to do now is divide this quadratic into two separate groups. And our goal is going to be to factor out whatever we can out of each of these groups. 
So what can I factor out out of the first group? Well, I know that both of these terms are a multiple of two, so I can factor out a two. And both of them have an x, so I know I can factor out an x. And so when I take out a 2x, what am I left with? Well, remember that factoring something out is the same thing as dividing it. So 2x squared dividing by 2x, we're just left with an x. And then 14x divided by 2x, that's just 7. And then we'll move on to our second group. Now, before we move on to that second group, I do want to quickly say, if you're having trouble dividing these terms by 2x in your head, you can write it out. There's nothing wrong with that. Take this 2x squared and divide it by 2x like this. You see the 2's cancel off, and one of the x's in the numerator will cancel off with the x in the denominator. And that gives you the x that we have here. And then you can do the same thing with 14x, and dividing that by 2x, just write it out, and you'll get the 7. So if you're having trouble doing it mentally, there's always that. But now let's move on to that second group. What can we factor out here? Well, I can see that both of those terms are multiples of three, so I'm gonna factor out a three. And then what am I left with? Well, three x divided by three, that's x. And then 21 divided by three is a seven. So I get three times x plus seven. Now the last step of factoring by grouping is seeing, hey, what do these two groups have in common? Well, they both have that x plus seven, don't they? So what we're gonna do is we're going to factor that x plus seven out. And when we factor that x plus seven out, what are we left with? We'll take away a x plus seven from the first group and you're just left with a two x. And take away the x plus seven from the second group and you're left with a plus three. So what we get is x plus seven times two x plus three and those are our factors. So now let's move on to the last problem for this video, 3x squared minus 5x plus 2. Now, again, this is another case where we have a number on that x squared. So our first goal, our first question is, can we separate that 3 from the x squared? Can we factor the 3 out? And we're not going to be able to factor that 3 out evenly here because, well, negative 5 is not divisible by 3, and 2 is not divisible by 3. Neither of them can be divided evenly by 3. And so what we're going to want to do here is factor by grouping. So let's set up our little x chart. We're finding two numbers that add to be what? Well, they need to add to be negative 5. And they need to multiply to be what? Well, they need to multiply to be that 2 times the 3 out front of the x squared. So they need to multiply to be 6. Okay, so what are two numbers that add to be negative 5 and multiply to be 6? Well, some numbers that multiply to be 6 are 1 and 6. How about negative 1 and negative 6? Since we know we're going to need a negative number here. But neither of those pairs of numbers add to be negative 5. So we've got to keep going here. We know 2 and 3 multiply to be 6. And negative 2 and negative 3 multiply to be 6. And, well, this last pair of numbers, that adds to be negative 5. So negative 2 and negative 3 are going to be our numbers here. So what we're going to do... So we're going to write this quadratic as 3x squared. We're splitting up this negative 5x with these two numbers. So we're going to write it as negative. You can put either of those numbers first, the 3 or the 2. I'm going to put the 3 first. So I'll have minus 3x. And then we have minus 2x. And then I have that plus 2. So now we divide our quadratic into two separate groups. And our goal is to see what can we factor out of each group. In the first group, what can we factor out? Well, both of these terms are multiples of 3. So we can factor out a 3. And then we definitely can take out an x. So we'll factor out a 3x. Now, what are we left with after we factor out that 3x? Well, dividing 3x squared by 3x, we're left with x. And dividing negative 3x by 3x, we're left with a negative 1. And that's our first group. What about our second group, though? Well, with our second group, it looks like we can only factor out a 2. So let's do that. Let's pull out a 2. If we factor out a 2, then from negative 2x, we're only left with a negative x, right? Negative 2x divided by 2 is negative x. And then 2 divided by 2 is a positive 1. 
So we get 2 times negative x plus 1. And that gives us a little bit of an issue, doesn't it? Because before, in problem 4, we got that the x plus 7s were that like piece out of these two groups, and we were able to factor that x plus 7 out. But in problem 5, we've got something a little bit different going on here. We've got that x minus 1, but over here we don't have an x minus 1. We have a negative x plus 1. And you can see that's kind of the opposite of x minus 1. The negative is just on the wrong term, right? It should be on the 1, not the x. And so what we can do to fix that negative issue is instead of factoring out a 2, what we're going to do is we're going to factor out a negative 2. And you'll see that ends up fixing our issue completely. Negative 2x divided by negative 2 is a positive x. And then 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. So in our second group, we get that x minus 1. And now, since both of our groups have an x minus 1, we can factor that x minus 1 out. So what we end up getting is an x minus 1 times, well, what are we left with? In the first group, we're left with 3x. And in the second group, we're left with a negative 2. And so that is our answer for problem 5. So that is factoring trinomials in a nutshell. And if you're feeling pretty comfortable with this, then here's a problem for you to try and answer in the comments. Here we have 10x squared plus 89x minus 9. So give that problem a shot. Let me know what your answer is in the comments. And if you have any questions on anything we talked about in this video, again, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Now, remember, I do have that extra video in the description where you and I will go through and factor 10 more of these quadratics. We'll be doing binomials, trinomials. We'll also be doing factoring by grouping a bunch. So if you're looking for that extra practice, I have that extra video linked right in the description. Lastly, make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. We're getting closer and closer to 100K by the day. And it sounds like crazy to think about. But anyways, that's going to do for this video. And I'll see you guys soon.